What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be taking a look at some Mattel unreleased action figures. These are figures that either they released and they were somewhat changed, or they never made it to market and, you know, there was just some things that were out of our control, things that we couldn't control that uh, led to these figures not ending up making it to the market. Maybe they got cut from the line. Maybe, uh, you know, the talent got cut. Maybe they got released. Something happened along the lines. And today, we're going to look at a bunch of figures. Now, I'm going to say that there may be some that I'm missing from the video, some that don't make the list or the cut that I don't cover here today. And if that's the case and you guys want to see this part two or something like that, well, we can dive into that. But before we go any further, guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to Unreleased Wrestling Figs on Instagram. Very informational Instagram page. If you guys want to check him out, Unreleased Wrestling Figs on Instagram is where I got all of these photos and the information from this. So I appreciate him and I appreciate his page for allowing me to get this info. But definitely go give him a follow. Absolute Beast. Great page. Great information. Information, you definitely want to check them out. But let's go ahead and dive in, guys. Let's start things off first with this Rated R Elite Lita figure. Now, this one pretty much kind of released. You know, it all started off. It was going to be, I think it started off as this figure, and then it changed to a three-pack, and then it got to the figure that we actually got, which was the Royal Rumble Lita that was Target exclusive that had the interchangeable head sculpts. This figure is pretty identical to that figure, except the graphics on the shirt are a little different. The pants ended up being the dry-brushed blue jeans that we got, and I'm happy with the figure we did get. I love the figure that we got. I love this figure as well but this one was one that we ended up having to change and it did eventually make it to market but this exact version right here is unreleased but let's dive into the next figure guys we have an unreleased basic Jeff Hardy now you can see there he has the signature hands this is back when you know the elite one Jeff was coming out I do believe and they were gonna have a basic to go probably in the first few series of that and they ended up having to cancel it obviously because elite one Jeff Hardy got canceled and you know he was released from the company he had all his stuff going on and we never got this basic. Thank God that we actually ended up getting the signature hands. It was years and years and years later until we got the signature hands, but everything is right in the world. Jeff Hardy elites were being made now. We get basics. We get all kinds of stuff from Jeff Hardy, but this could, you could see that it had that older Jeff Hardy head sculpt that we've seen on the Elite 2 pack. You can see that uh, it, it would have been a pretty banger basic, especially with the interchangeable arms, which I was super happy about when they first got Jeff Hardy back into WWE because I was thinking of all the shoulder and arm swaps we could do with his figures to change the attire and then of course they change the articulation and that uh, yeah, yeah let's just move on next up guys we have a play set now this is probably the best thing on this damn list okay at least in my opinion the money in the bank authentic scale money in the bank accessory set for our authentic scale ring now this thing would have been a banger i would have loved to use this in the pick fed we of course did get a different version i used the jacks version and then just sort of converted it to mattel and my pick fed and we made it work i thought that we made it work for the pick fed and i actually think that the way i did it actually is a little bit better because I had all four corners you know I had all four corners there I had you know the big centerpiece in the middle and I had the little scaffolding on all four corners that you could climb up and stuff but at the end of the day this would have been a banger piece and I would have definitely gotten this and I know a lot of other people would have gotten it but I need to make a video I, well, I guess I did make a video but I need to make a full video of me converting that jacks one into Mattel so you guys can see exactly what that looks like but this is a banger one that we never got and I am very upset that we never did get that one but let's move on to probably the most popular unreleased elite ever it is the Elite One Jeff Hardy. Now, you can say that, you know, some people do have this figure out there. There's people that own this in their collections, and there were a few pushed out to a few stores, I think. It was very, very limited quantity, and, you know, they, they snuck it in there, and there was only a few available, you know, just, just a mock Jeff Hardy Elite One. What a beautiful piece, and I feel like it being and having the story that it is is just so special. It makes the figure look so much more badass, and it just looks so good. This is probably one of the most beautiful mock figures that you can ever ever get just the way it looks and everything we did end up getting the entrance grades later on but this one right here man is just a beautiful piece and there are people out there again that do own this figure it's very limited probably one of the most rare figures that Mattel's ever made or that's out there that you can get as a Mattel WWE action figure collector but this one's just a special piece you of course have your Japanese bootleg that they had and all those prototypes that are out there but if you end up with a final released version of this figure it is special and uh, you know it can still stand the test of time today but I do love my entrance grades though. Moving on guys, we do have the WrestleMania Access exclusive Asuka. Now this one was ended up releasing or re-releasing as a Target exclusive without the uh, without the robe of course. I think this is supposed to be a WrestleMania 35 Access exclusive. Bill came out and 
happened. I think he announced this on Instagram or something, and then I don't remember what happened. I think they ended up into a, a production issue or something with the robe, and they couldn't get the cloth right or something, and they ended up having to cancel it, and then, of course, we did get the, uh, the re-release or the other version that ended up being that Target exclusive network spotlight figure, which did not come with the robe, but it did come with the masks and the helmet and stuff. I don't think it came with all three masks, but it did come with a couple. It had the helmet, and it's a beautiful figure. I think it's the best Asuka to this point, and it's a great figure, and uh, it is a bummer we never got the robe, but I'm sure, I'm sure as hell we're going to get an Ultimate Edition Asuka with the robe somewhere down the line, and I could definitely see that happening and taking place, and I don't mind it. I love Asuka to death, and I think this is a banger figure we would have got, guys. Moving on, this one right here is super upsetting. This is one of those figures that, my God, man, this this haunts me to this day. The Ultimate Deletion set with, with Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. Now, we did get the Network Spotlight Matt Hardy, but that one only came with a dilapidated boat. It only came with Vanguard 1. It did not come with the Mower of Lawns. It did not come with the Row there or the, the Oar or whatever that's called. And it was very upsetting. And this Bray Wyatt Elite is beautiful. We did end up getting this Matt Hardy from this set, but we never got the Bray Wyatt. And I really wanted that Bray Wyatt with the red pants and the leather boots. He looks like a freaking beast in those pants. I know we have our Elite 54, but that one with the red and the khaki or the gator scale, whatever the hell you want to call those boots, they look sick as hell in that Bray Wyatt. I love the interchangeable hands with that Bray Wyatt. That's a beautiful piece. This set, I, I God, man, I don't know how the hell we're ever going to get the mower of lawn now, now that Matt Hardy's in AEW. So uh, hopefully, maybe. Maybe, maybe Bray Wyatt could come with it. Maybe they'll do like a flashback Wyatt in this attire and we can get the mower of lawn that way with the ore to, you know, pair it together. I'm not sure, but maybe one day that'll happen. But that is one of the biggest disappointment sets that we never got was the Ultimate Deletion set unreleased right there. Next, guys, we do have an Elite 55 Neville. Now, this was how it was shown first in the all black attire, which I think would have been better. I like the all black over the all gold that we ended up getting or the gold trunks that we ended up getting. Not a bad attire for the gold trunks, but I would have much preferred the black attire. It fit the heel character. It just made the figure, I don't know, it just makes Neville look more badass than he already was. Elite 55 Neville was one of those figures that a lot of people really, really love, and I love it too. Uh, I, of course, do love this figure, but I would have really loved to seen us get the black attire, which we did get a gold attire, which is always nice. You know, usually we're, content we're you know, complaining about black attires. In this case, we would have preferred it, but we did not get this specific version of Elite 55 Neville, which takes me into this battle pack has nothing to do with Neville, but this battle pack right here is uh, a Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens battle pack that ended up not being released, and thank God that it didn't. I know that we did get a version of it, but it was, wasn't was them in their wrestling gear with these yep, yep, yep t-shirts. If this battle pack would have released, guys, it would have been probably dubbed the worst battle pack to ever exist ever, and this thing just looks abysmal. I, I can't even describe it. These just jogging pants with the t-shirts like these things would have rotted on shelves like this would have been the biggest shelf warmer probably of all time you would have found these everywhere there would have been like 25 of them everywhere it would have been like elite 38 daniel bryan in this hoe elite 32 daniel bryan in this hoe this right here would have just just tito santana all day long it would be right up there with tito santana as the biggest shelf warmer of all time but this one right here had to go on the list, and thank God it didn't release, even though we got a variant of it. This one right here, man, just let me get it out of my face. Next up, guys, it's a Roman Reigns. Now, I don't know exactly the full story behind this one. I think Bill McKenna showed this off in, in some form or fashion. I don't know if it was on Instagram or on, like, a little YouTube video. I don't know what the hell this is. It looks kind of look like it's out of a magazine or something. I don't think that's the case. But you guys can see there, it's a Roman Reigns Elite, and it does have the gold trim. We did get a Network Spotlight figure that was his WrestleMania 32 attire, but this this was way before that even happened. This is supposed to be like a 2014-15 era of Roman Reigns, I think, where, you know, he, he had different versions of his gear that were trimmed in blue. He had, like, the trimmed in dark green. He had, uh, apparently, he had a version in gold. I don't remember that. I, I, I want to say I faintly or vaguely remember it, but that's not coming to me right now. But this would have been a pretty cool release. I think that it would have been, you know, a little bit different. I would have preferred maybe the blue version that we got in the battle pack or uh, the dark green version, but this is cool, too. Um, maybe I'm saying that because we already got the network spotlight now. Now, but uh, this would have been a really cool release. Apparently, they showed a Seth Rollins back then as well, which I don't have a photo of, which I would have loved to seen. But maybe I can get a photo of that somewhere. But this Roman Reigns looks really dope. We also have a Then Now Forever Basic No Way Jose. Of course, we did get our Elite, which was the NXT exclu or NXT Target exclusive, which is a beautiful figure. One of my favorite figures in the collection, man. That that 
piece is so sick, and I'm so glad that they actually made a No Way Jose Elite. I thought he was super underrated. They just buried the man. I understand it, but you know what? Let's move on with the figure here. This is a basic version of that figure. Uh, I think this attire is a little bit better. I think the Elite actually was orange and red. This one is lime green and blue, which I thought was better, but it's pretty much a basic version of the Elite. Next up, guys, we have another variant type figure. It is the Batista, which is sort of a hybrid between his Elite 30 and 33 figure. This is not the Blue Tista. This is what I guess they were going with, but then they changed it because maybe they thought that it looked too much like the Elite 30, which which was pretty much this, but it had the more long, it had a little bit longer trunks, it had black boots, and instead of course the Jordan mold that they went with here that he rocked when he returned to the company. Now this, uh, I'm very glad they changed it to Blue Tista. I think the Blue Tista figure is much better with colors and stuff. This just looks really plain and Jane, especially when you look at the Elite 30, which is pretty much the same exact figure, so I am glad. Or is maybe, th is this the Elite 30 before it got changed to what we got for Elite 30? I don't know. Maybe that's the case, but Let's just move on, guys. We have a Paul Ellering figure. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be a Build-A-Figure or if this is supposed to be a regular Elite, but we never got the figure. I don't know why they did that. They just ended up not releasing it. I, don't, I think this was way before he ended up leaving the company, so I don't know why they did this. I'm not sure exactly what the whole story is, but we never got this Paul Ellering figure, which is very disappointing considering we did get our... Uh, Authors of Pain Elites, which were great. This would have been great to pair with that, especially on the shelf. Um, next up, guys, we do have a Brad Maddox Build-A-Figure, which is one that I could have sworn that, you know, we would have gotten. And I don't know, again, the whole story. Maybe he got released before they ended up making it. But the head sculpt looks just like him. I think that head sculpt looks just like Brad Maddox. I think it's a really excellent figure for the Build-A-Figure. And uh, it's a damn shame that, you know, we never got this. I don't know how many people were disappointed with it, but it would have been a cool release to see, especially when, you know, they're trying to make everybody that's on screen at the time. Next up, guys, is a very unique. We have a prototype of the NWO Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And this is really cool, especially knowing what we know now. This figure uh, will be released, but it will be an Ultimate Edition. And that's just so cool that we have the render from way back when, before Hulkster got released there. And, you know, they canceled all his figures. And then uh, we have the prototype here, which isn't very much, but it is, uh, you know, the standard pre-production before we ended up getting it. You can see that it would have had the ripped shirt mold, the black tights, and everything like that. I'm not big on the prototypes of figures. I know that a lot of people are out there collecting them. They like to create, or they like to collect the samples and the pre-production posts and the, you know, stuff like that. I'm not big into that. I don't know what that is, but I think it's really cool to see people's collections like that. I'm just not into that specific part of collecting. If you guys are like that, I would love to know anything you guys have in the comment section. I think that's a really cool thing. I just, you know, I've never been a fan of you know, collecting that myself, I guess. But let's go ahead and move things forward, guys. We do have a prototype of a Michael Tarver Elite. Now, if you guys remember him from the Nexus, and I think he might have been in the core or whatever. I I think. I could be wrong about that. But anyways, he was in the company and then immediately out of the company, and it sucks because I think this would have been a pretty good figure to use for different body molds and stuff like that. You know, he was a pretty big dude. And I've seen people make elite customs of him, and they're pretty good figures and stuff like that. I like to see that, you know, they were going to end up making him. We did get a basic of him, and I guess you could have made it him. You could make him into an elite now if you wanted to. If you got that basic, you just pop the head sculpt on there, do a little bit of customizing, stuff like that. But uh, unfortunately, Tarver never got his elite figure, but it looks like it was in production. I don't know if it was going to be in the main elite line or if it would have been differently. But let's move on to our final figure here today, guys. And it is an elite one-man gang that ended up up not being released I think because he was in a lawsuit with WWE and obviously they're not going to put your figure out if you're uh, suing them so uh, that is the reason why we didn't get it but it looks like uh, I don't think this is the final product or anything but it looks pretty damn good I think they did a really good job of capturing it and everything like that it's kind of crazy how far into production they were there with this figure but I think it's a pretty damn good football figure if you ask me I like the molds we got and I don't think we've ever seen those boots before have you guys ever seen those boots on another figure with the buckles at the top and the bottom. They remind me a lot of the Nasty Boys boots, but they're a little bit different. Um, if you guys can figure that out, let me know. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much all the unreleased figures that we're going to talk about here today. Obviously, this isn't all of them. There are a lot more that I could have put in the video, but I decided not to because maybe we want to do a Series 2. And I don't want to sit here for 20 minutes. We've already been here for a little bit now. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I think my reviews of Elite Series 76 will be going up tomorrow, so I'm super excited about that. We're going to have an action figure surgery this weekend. We're going to have some other great videos going up for you guys, including a ranked video 
video on the Hardy Boy figures, so stay tuned for that. We're going to combine Jeff and Matt together because together, I think each individually they only have 10, which if we split that up, it wouldn't be that long. So we're going to do one big Super Hardy Boys ranking video, which I'm really excited about coming this weekend too. So stay tuned for that, guys, but I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.